want to do something that if you go there, you're like, oh my God, this is amazing. I want you to be excited about it. Well, to start with, I think, you know, the whole point of design is it to do something that is different. Uh, designers are, I suppose, so supposedly people with ideas that want to express those ideas. So if you are doing the same as, our, as, as a thousand people have done before, I don't think it can be a beautiful hotel, but I wouldn't call it design. This is just a year ago, so I read this article on, on some subject. So I, I bumped onto this word, word fantasy, and, and I stopped at the word, and I'm like, it's such a beautiful word, it's such a beautiful meaning. Fantasy should be one of the words within design that always plays up, that's always there. If we do a room, the next room we try to do it different. Uh, we try to make uh, to make it exciting for you to go through a door and to come into a new world, to find something new. Um, we we do live in, in, a, in a philosophical era, modernism, where uh, the past is irrelevant for the future. The past is irrelevant for the future, but if. If that is true, what does that mean for the things we create today? That tomorrow they are irrelevant? To me that's unacceptable. So I really can't live with that idea and I really want to find a way to make things today that tomorrow are relevant. So I hold my daughter's hand and I hold my grandmother's hand and I'm trying to be in the middle of all that. If we want to make the world a place that is more durable, and I think we have to start thinking in, in longer terms. We have to not to throw away things every day. We have to keep them longer. We have to appreciate things from further away. And so it's something that I, I really deliberately do since, uh, since I'm a designer. If you go there, it feels authentic. It feels like if we do something for Beijing, you should go there and you should feel, oh, this is Beijing, this, I'm really in Beijing. You, you don't want to feel in Vegas when you're in Beijing. So you want to feel that. But also you want to feel something, so you want to recognize something, but also you want to find something new. So that's a bit weird, that's a bit difficult. That's in fact impossible. Um, that's what we're doing. So there's a lot of polarity in what we try to realize. And that's where, where our work is, is complicated and interesting also. And the fact that there's these oppositions that have to together create one story. So although I would say that residential spaces, uh, I, I would like them to be a bit more quiet. Um, if I go for a weekend and I go to Shanghai, uh, this is my weekend, I'm gonna just, I love that. If I'm in my house, uh, I have to be there on Monday, on Tuesday, and Wednesday, and all through the year. So maybe uh, my house can be a little bit more quiet, and I think that's fair. Uh, so in, in the houses, on average, what we do, we, we kind of um, put a bit more energy in the public terrain, in the entrance, the lobby, the elevator, the pool, and such things. And the rooms themselves are uh, a little bit more quiet. They're still super beautiful and excited and, and, and very delicate. Uh, but uh, there is a bit of, the, a, bit of a difference in the, in the public terrain and in the uh, private terrain. I do also think that there, there lies a little bit of a, a novel idea. Because I do believe that our houses uh, are changing. I think my country is smaller than this city, probably. So it's, uh, it's super small, um, but, uh, but I like it a lot. It's very open culture. It's, it's always been um, a haven uh, for people around the world, even, even like hundreds of years ago. And it has made us... Um, of course, if, if you get people from abroad over, of course, you, you disagree on a lot of things, but if you're still able to listen a little bit, you kind of learn fast. And uh, so we've become a, a type of people that are very open-minded and, uh, 
And I do believe it is one of the fundamentals of a cultural and creative society.